Chapter 9 is the fourth chapter in our syllabus uh, of uh, strategic brand management. It's about measuring sources of brand equity. The learning objectives of this chapter uh, are describing effective qualitative research techniques for tapping into consumer brand knowledge and also identifying some other quantitative research techniques for measuring brand awareness, image, responses, and relationships. And finally, profile and contrast some popular brand equity models. In learning objective two, if you can, uh, you can see that we are going to discuss techniques that measure brand awareness, image, responses, and relationships. Those are uh, the basics and the fundamentals and the pillars of brand resonance model or consumer-based uh, brand equity model, which is CBBE. Qualitative research techniques, techniques include free associations, projective techniques, Zoltman metaphor technique, neural research method, brand personality and value, ethnographic and experiential methods. For the purpose of our study, we will concentrate and focus on only three of them, namely free associations, projective techniques, and brand personality and value. For the other three, you just read them. Before commencing with the qualitative research techniques, it is worth noting that uh, these techniques are relatively unstructured measurement approach that permit a range of uh, uh, questions and answers. And accordingly, uh, it can often be a useful uh, step in exploring consumer brand and product perceptions. The first technique that we are going to highlight here is the free associations technique. is a very simple and powerful technique to profile brand uh, associations. Um, according to this technique, you simply start by asking uh, a very general, uh, asking uh, candidates or subjects a very general question. For example, what do you think of McDonald's? For example, and accordingly, you would start, if you think about it, if I'm asking you right now in class, if I'm in class, I'm asking you what do you think about McDonald's, you would start to tell me some um, uh, things that that, that first come to your mind, like for example, fast, convenient, affordable, tasty, responsive, reliable, um, and so on, hygiene, and so on. So it helps accordingly, these associations that you highlighted, it helps formulating mental map for the brand. Here we are discussing or taking McDonald's as an example. Accordingly, these associations or these mental map, this rough mental map, indicate the relative strengths of favorability and uniqueness of brand associations. Is they how it it do uh, it does so? Indicating the relative strengths. أول حاجات حضرتك قلتها في association, like for example, fast and convenient. This means if all subjects or the vast majority of subjects or candidates who are asked, what do you think of McDonald's? They are all admitted that it is fast and convenient comes f come first. This means that those are the strong points about McDonald's that really affect consumer decision making. What come what 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 come later? It's weak points, like for example, responsive and reliable. Now here at the end of the list, uh, and across most of the subjects and candidates you are asking, the معني in these two points are the weak points. وغالباً they don't actually affect consumer decision making. If you would like to know about favor, uh, about favor, uh, favorability, basically, you can uh, we can also. Uh, um, uh, it could be indicated according to how consumers are phrasing their association, how they are saying it. I really like McDonald's, for example. And also, if you would like to know about its uniqueness, then you can basically compare associations uh, that you come up with in your mental map for McDonald's with any other competing brand. McDonald's competing مع مثلا Hardee's, competing مع Burger King, competing مع Mints. فنشوف ال mental map اللي تعملت, ال associations اللي طلعت, fast, convenient, affordable, tasty, responsive, reliable, hygienic, etc. etc. Try to compare كل ال associations that you elicited uh, for McDonald's with those for other competing brands, then you would know to what extent it is relatively unique. 
if you would like to dig in more, this is a very general question. What do you think about X, Y, and Z? If you would like to dig more about McDonald's in particular, in terms of favorability and uniqueness, there are a number of questions that you can ask uh, and probe in with candidates and subjects. Like, for example, you can ask the person, what do you like uh, uh, the, uh, most about McDonald's? What are the advantages of it? What do, what you don't like, uh, what do you like least about McDonald's? What are the negatives or a disadvantage? What do you find unique about McDonald's? Um, and how it is really different uh, compared to other brands like, uh, as we, we mentioned before, uh, Men's, uh, Hardee's, uh, Burger King, etc. You can also dig even, even more by asking questions related to who, what, when, where, why, and how. Who uses the brand? What types of situations do they use the brand? When and where do they use the brand? And so on. Two main guidelines of two concerns in conducting the free association tasks. What types of probes to give to subjects and how to code and interpret the data. What types of probes to give to subjects? This is actually, you tend to start with or commence with very general uh, uh, thing or consideration, like what do you think about McDonald's and commence asking and then uh, go on to more specific uh, considerations. And in terms of coding and interpreting the result, you tend basically uh, uh, to um, aggregate the answers of consumers regarding one uh, consideration across all consumers. And then for more uh, uh, detailed questions, like uh, what do you think, uh, what, 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 uh, what do you like more about the brand, what do you like least about the brand, and so on, those are easily coded and are easily aggregated across all subjects. The second qualitative technique is projective technique. Projective techniques are diagnostic tools to uncover the true opinions and feelings of consumers when they are unwilling or unable to express themselves. Usually, marketeers tend to present consumers with an incomplete stimulus or incentive and ask them to complete it or an ambiguous or unclear one and ask them to make sense out of it. The idea is that in the process, consumers will reveal some of their true beliefs and feelings. And accordingly, projective techniques are very useful to use in personal and sensitive issues. And they, are, uh, uh, they have a very long history in marketing. So accordingly, I'm asking you please to read uh, Branding Brief 92, page 329 in your textbook. There are three types of projective techniques. Number one, completion and interpretation tasks. Number two, comparisons tasks. And number three, arch types. First technique to be discussed is completion and interpretation tasks. This is a very classical projective technique. It is you, uh, use incomplete or ambiguous stimuli to elicit consumer thoughts and feelings. One approach to do, to do so is uh, using bubble exercises, which depict, depict different people buying or using certain products or services. Empty bubbles, as in cartoons, as highlighted in uh, the slide in front of you, there are empty bubbles. The man is asking the woman or telling the woman, let's see if we can have coffee at Starbucks. And you can see Starbucks back in the back uh, at the top of the, uh, of the building. And whatever the uh, woman is going to answer, this is basically what marketeers are looking for. So marketeers then ask consumers to fill in the bubble by indicating what they believe is happening or being said in the scene. The stories and conversations told this way can be especially useful for assessing user and usage imagery for a brand. Comparison tasks is the second technique under projective techniques. In comparison tasks, we ask consumers to convey their impressions by comparing brands to people, animals, countries, activities, vegetables, nationalities, etc., cars, etc. For example, if I'm asking you if Danone yogurt were a car, which one would it be? Someone would uh, tell me um, a BMW, some other one would uh, say it's um, a Volex, another one would say it's a Fiat, and so on. If it were an animal, which one might be? It could be a monkey, could be uh, a giraffe, 
could be uh, a lion, whichever your answer would be. In each case, we would ask a follow-up question like, why you made the comparison? I have to probe in, I have to dig in and ask you why you made this particular comparison. So from the answers, marketeers can get proper reasons and provide uh, your answers will provide glimpses into the psyche of the consumer with respect to a brand, particularly useful in understanding imagery associations. Marketeers tend to examine the answers they are getting from the candidates and accordingly, by assembling the answers, they may get a better and rich image of the brand, particularly by identifying brand personality associations. Please read uh, Branding Brief 9.3 in your textbook, page 331. Archetypes are, uh, is the third projective technique. Archetype, a fundamental psychological association shared by the members of the culture with a given cultural object. When we say shared by the members of the culture, like for instance, shared among Egyptians, shared among uh, French, shared among British, and so on, uh, towards a particular object in the culture. It is a technique for eliciting deeply held consumer attitudes and feelings, because usually when we make a, a buy, when we purchase something or make a decision to buy or purchase something, we usually base our decision on uh, um, uh, subconscious factors. We are not very well aware with the factors that make us uh, buy this particular thing. And therefore, the traditional market research do not uh, do not or uh, does not cover, uh, uncover these motivation. For an example of an archetype, for example, uh, cheese in different countries it has a different archetype. In France, the archetype for cheese is alive because age is its most important trait. Benisbal Frenchien, given a benisbal home, the uh, the old the older it the older it gets, the better taste it has. However, on the contrary, مثلا, لو بصينا لنفس الأوبجيكت ده بس في الستيتس في أمريكا, الأرشتايب فور تشيز إن ستيت إز ديد, totally the opposite. الفرنش بيبل بيشوفوها إتس ألايف, الأمريكان بيبل بيشوفوها ديد. الفرنش بيبل بيشوفوها ألايف علشان, as I said, the older it gets, the better taste it has. في الأمريكان بيبل بيشوفوها ديد because it is wrapped in plastic, ف it's a body bag. It, it, we put it in the fridge, it's like a morgue, هي, uh, body bag, هي, uh, we put it in the fridge, uh, it's like a morgue, التلاجات, and uh, so on. فبالتالي الاختلافات واضحة جدا بين الفرنش بيبل والامريكان بيبل as an archetype. And accordingly, the psychologist بيستخدم ال بيحط ال 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 consumers بتوع in a relaxation mode and find the imprint in order to find the appropriate arch بالنسبة له بالنسبة لبراند معين أو لproduct معين. It's one of the projective techniques. أساسا كلمة projective يعني إيه projective technique يعني إسقاط. إسقاط يعني you don't say the right thing about yourself. لو حد for example مثلا بيخاف من الطيارات ما بيقولش على نفسه أنا بخاف من الطيارات يعمل projection على حد تاني يقول صوروا ده فلان بيخاف من كذا ده فلان بيخاف من الأدوار العليا ده فلان بيخاف من الأسانسورات ده فلان بيطلع على السلم لأنه بيخاف للأسانسور يعطل بيه and actually this is basically uh, something in the person himself or herself لكن ما بيقدرش to spell it out this is what we mean by projective technique at the end so Projective techniques um, uh, is the second approach in qualitative uh, approaches. It consists of three techniques. Technique number one is um, uh, uh, technique, technique, uh, technique number one is completion and interpretation tasks. Technique number two, comparison tasks. And finally, the arch types. Brand personality and values is the third qualitative technique. Brand personality is the human characteristics or traits that consumers can attribute to a brand. We already discussed the brand personality earlier in Chapter 3 of the Strategic Brand Management Syllabus and also in Principles of Marketing uh, last year. It, it, could be, 
it could be measured in a very simple way by basically uh, asking a question and an open-ended question and waiting for the answer like for example uh, a marketeer can ask a, a candidate or a consumer if the brand where to any brand that comes to your mind if the brand were to come alive as a person what would it be like هتوصف ساعتها هيبقى شكله ايه؟ راجل مبدئيا راجل ولا ست؟ فيمينين ولا ماسكولين؟ هي طويل ولا قصير؟ تخين ولا رفيع؟ and so on. What would it do? Where would it live? What would it wear? Who would it talk to if it went to a party? And what would it talk about? And then you start actually probing and probing and probing and uh, from the responses you can get uh, the marketeer can get uh, an idea and a glimpse about the personality of a particular brand there is other means also to measure personality brand personality like for example marketeers can give consumers a variety of pictures or uh, some magazines and ask them to assemble a profile of the brand then uh, the marketeer can get a glimpse also about the personality of the brand. Moreover, and most importantly, we usually marketeers are using the big five brand personality scale to basically measure and understand the brand personality. And these uh, that consist of five factors in that include sincerity, excitement, competence, sophistication, and ruggedness. Next slide, we will highlight uh, more in detail uh, uh, about the, by, uh, the, the big five personality. Figure 9.4 illustrates brand personality scale measures. In your textbook, it is highlighted in page 335. Um, the, uh, this figure uh, illustrates the specific trait items that make up the Acre brand personality scale. Acre is the founder of this scale. Aker conduct, conducted a study where he uh, she, where she asked a number of respondents to rate how descriptive each personality trait was for each brand. He, he, he conducted a study, she conducted a study for a number of brands and asked respondents to rate uh, how descriptive each personality trait for each brand according to a seven point scale, where one equal not at all descriptive, up to seven equal extremely descriptive. The result indicated that some brands tend to be strong on one uh, factor, some others like Nike were, uh, are strong on number of factors, and some other brands um, uh, were uh, poor on all the factors. To sum up, qualitative research techniques discover consumer perceptions that are difficult to uncover. However, it has some drawbacks. Number one, the small sample size may not necessarily generalize to broader populations, meaning that the results that you uh, that marketeers get from customers, usually it's from a small sample, like not more than 30, maximum 50. Therefore, we cannot generalize the results of this small sample to a, a big population. Number two, due to qualitative nature, data is open to varied interpretations. Uh, different researchers may interpret the results differently and may examine the same results from a qualitative research. Uh, however, the conclusions might be different. So interpretation of results might be different. We'll commence the second part of this chapter. Uh, we will be discussing quantitative research techniques, where marketeers often want a more definitive portrait of the brand to allow them to make more confident and defensible strategic and tactical recommend recommendations. Therefore, they tend to use some quantitative techniques. These techniques include brand awareness, brand image, brand responses, and brand relationships. We'll be discussing uh, these techniques in the coming slides. Brand awareness is related to the strengths of the brand in memory, um, as reflected by consumers' ability to identify various brand elements like brand name, logo, symbol, package, slogan, etc. It basically describes the likelihood that a brand will come to mind in different situations and the ease with which it does so given different types of cues. We will be discussing a number of awareness uh, issues like recognition, recall, corrections for guessing, and strategic implications. The first issue of brand awareness is recognition. 
Brand recognition requires consumers to identify the brand under a variety of circumstances. One simple and easy test is giving consumers a set of individual items, visually or orally, and ask them whether the, they think they have previously seen or heard of these items. Typically, the answer would be yes or no. Either they really recognize them, have seen them before, or no, they didn't, uh, they have not seen them before. Uh, to take this uh, test further, we can basically ask them also to rate their confidence in recognizing an item. Are you confident enough while recognizing the item? Was it easy to recall? Uh, uh, you know it by heart. Uh, you were confident while saying the brand name. There are more sensitive tests uh, for brand recognition. Uh, one of them, the, uh, which called perceptually degraded versions of the brand. This uh, means that we can test brand name recognition with missing letters. You can look in your, uh, at your book, figure 96, page 339, and you can, you can examine your ability in recognizing some brand names with less than full information. You would find in the list 15 different brand names with missing letters, and actually the answer is uh, down there in the figure. I, uh, I identified myself brand number two, brand number five, brand number nine, 13, and 15 without looking at the uh, answer key. So try it uh, yourself. Definitely, uh, this type uh, of test, uh, this uh, perceptually degraded test, is important uh, with uh, brands that, ha that, that ha with brands that have a high level of uh, recognition. Also, brand recognition is important for packaging in particular. And there is um, uh, what they call a best case of the visibility of a package. When a consumer with 20-20 vision, 20-20 vision is face-to-face -face with a package, package, at a distance of less than 5 feet of the package, uh, one feet equals 300 meter. So how of distance أقل من five feet and un under ideal lighting conditions. To what extent the key question here? To what extent the package design is robust enough to be still recognizable? However, they are saying that this is the ideal situation. Usually, when you go shopping, you are not in an ideal situation. The light may not be as as you used to. You might you might not be as close as you should. You might not be at a distance less than five feet. Um, you might not be at face to face with the package. The question is: Would you be able? Would you still be able to recognize the brand? Yes or no? Another sensitive test, what they call T-scopes and eye-tracking techniques, uh, where basically uh, they are, uh, this type of uh, techniques uh, exist to test the effectiveness of alternative package design according to a number of specific criteria. Uh, for example, distance, angle, and speed at which the package can first be identified. There are uh, these sensitive tests beside the yes or no test are suitable actually to uh, measure and examine brand recognition. One advantage of brand recognition over brand recall measures is the chance to use visual recognition. However, you can do this with recall measures. Second issue under brand awareness is brand recall. It is demonstrated when consumers are able to retrieve a brand element from memory when given some related probe or cue. Either unaided recall or aided recall. Unaided recall on the basis of all brands as a cue, only the strongest brands will be identified. If you are using aided recall, uses various types of cues to help consumer recall the brand. يا إما بتديله كيو تساعده بيها اللي هي في الإيدد ريكول ديفرنت كيوز البرودكت كاتيجري البرودكت تايب إكسترا إكسترا فيبتدي يفتكر البراند أن إيدد ريكول أنت بتقول له من ضمن ال من كل من ضمن العربيات الألماني عربية سرعتها كويسة عربية قوتها كويسة تبقى إيه فبتدي له بيزت على أول براندز من ضمن العربيات إيه العربية الممتازة الكويسة إكسترا and then you tend to narrow down then. So unaided recall, only strongest brand, brands will be identified. Uh, 
There are different measures of brand recall based on product attribute or usage goals or situational. The one based on uh, uh, product attributes, like for example, when you think of chocolate, which brands come to mind? Uh, upon usage goals, like for example, if you were thinking of having a healthy snack, which brands come to mind? Uh, when it comes to situational, we need to examine the different times and places where the, cons uh, where the consumer make the purchase decision. All these combined give an indication of the breadth and depth of brand recall. Third issue with brand awareness is corrections for guessing. Any research measure must consider the issue of consumers making up responses or guessing. Sometimes consumers, upon asking them, do you recall this brand, they would say yes, although they don't recall it, or even sometimes the brand does not even exist. And this is what we call spurious awareness. Spurious awareness means fake awareness or false awareness. Marketeers should be very much sensitive to, to the possibilities of misleading signals because of uh, th that came out of spurious brand awareness, especially with new brands or even with brands uh, that have uh, uh, sound name or known. Strategic implications is the last issue uh, under brand awareness. The advantage of aided recall measures is that they produce insight into how brand knowledge is organized in consumer memory and what kind of cues or reminders may be necessary for consumers to retrieve the brand from memory. The point is that the category structure that exists in consumers' mind, as reflected by brand recall performance, can have a significant implications for consumer choice and marketing strategy. Please refer to the Science of Branding 9.1, page 343 in your textbook for further illustration and demonstration. Brand image is the, um, brand image is the associations uh, that uh, consumers hold for a brand. It is useful for marketeers to make a distinction between lower, lower level consideration represented in consumer perception towards performance and uh, imagery attributes and benefits and higher level consideration represented in judgments, feelings and relationships. Uh, this section is considering some issue in measuring lower level brand performance and imagery association. To begin with, we have to identify what are the beliefs. And you, are, you should be aware, actually, uh, of the definition of beliefs. You already had it in organizational behavior. Beliefs are descriptive thoughts that a person holds about uh, something. With respect to brand association beliefs, those are uh, specific attributes and benefits linked to the brand and its competitors. Like, for example, Consumers may have brand association beliefs for a PlayStation as um, uh, fun and exciting, as colorful, great graphics, advanced technology, variety of game titles, and so on. Brand associations beliefs can be assessed on, uh, three, uh, di uh, on the basis of three key dimensions, namely strengths, favorability, and uniqueness. These dimensions uh, are making up the sources of brand equity. We can easily, in a very simple way, we can easily measure uh, those dimensions by asking open-ended questions, uh, like, for example, what are the strongest associations you have to the brand as strengths? What is good about the brand? This is favorability. What is unique about the brand in terms of characteristics and features? This, this would represent uniqueness. Uh, also, <clears throat> in order, excuse me, to gain more specific insights, we could rate these belief associations according to strengths, favorability, and uniqueness using figure 97 in your book, page 344. It illustrates uh, Lipton Ice Tea. You can uh, answer the questions and uh, give rating from 1 uh, to 7 uh, uh, to, the, uh, to the three key dimensions as highlighted. Another technique or another approach to assess uh, brand association uh, beliefs uh, is the multidimensional, more sophisticated and quantitative technique, uh, the one we call multidimensional scaling or perceptual maps. The multidimensional scaling is a procedure for determining perceived relative images of a set of objects 
such as products or brands. Multidimensional scaling transforms consumer judgments of similarity or preference into distances represented in perceptual space. What is the meaning? If I'm asking you about two brands, for example, McDonald's and uh, Hardee's, and your response was, uh, uh, those are quite similar brands for you. If the two, if you judge them as similar, according to the multidimensional scale and perceptual maps, the distance, the distance between brand A and brand B, which is McDonald's representing a uh, uh, Burger King or Hardee's representing B, the distance between them in an MDS will be smaller. If there is a huge difference between McDonald's and Men's, McDonald's and Hardee's, McDonald's and Burger King, then on the perceptual map, the difference, the, the distance would be quite far. To better understand uh, this um, example, look at figure 9-8 in your book, page 345. This is a hypothetical uh, perceptual map for a, res uh, for a restaurant. Uh, look at the, uh, we, we can look at uh, the figure in terms of the x-axis and y-axis. The x-axis represents health, healthy food. The y, uh, sorry, the x-axis represents, uh, I'm, I'm sorry again, the x-axis represents healthy health or healthy food. The y-axis represents flavor or less flavorful food. Um, in the figure, you have two segments, one and two, and we have three brands represented as A, B, and C. Look at segment number one. Look at the first segment. It is in the quadrant on the, on the top, on your right-hand side, on top, between healthy and flavorful. However, number one is quite close to being healthy. This means that this segment prefer healthy food. The closest brand from A, B, and C that could that could fulfill the need of this target segment is brand B. Look at the distance between segment A and segment B, and compare it, and compare the distance between segment A and uh, segment one and segment A. Which is closer to segment one is basically brand B. Look at segment two. It is in the uh, top uh, left-hand side between less healthy and flavorful. It's, it's going towards this segment, prefer the taste and the flavor of the food instead of the healthiness of the food. The closest brand that could serve and fulfill the need of this segment is C. Compare the distance between segment two and brand C, segment two and brand A, almost according to the example written in your book, they said that brand C is better uh, to serve and fulfill the need of segment two, as opposed to brand A. They highlighted that brand A is trapped in the middle. It comes in the middle between B and C. So either brand A should improve the health of uh, the food in order to become a competitor to brand C, or it improves the flavor in order to be a competitor to brand B. This is a hypothetical restaurant perceptual map, figure 9-8, page 3-4-5. Please refer to the audio in the previous slide. Brand responses. The purpose of measuring more general, higher level considerations. Higher level considerations here, like uh, judgment, feelings, and relationship with the brand, is basically to find out how consumers combined all the more specific, lower level considerations. Um, a lower level consideration represented uh, in performance and a measuring of the brand. Uh, about the brand in their minds to form different types of brand responses and evaluations. Accordingly, 
purchase intentions are determined by brand attitudes and considerations, they are more likely to be predictive of actual purchase when there is correspondence between the two in the following dimension. With respect to action, are you buying the product or brand for yourself, for self-consumption, or you are going to uh, present it as a gift to others? The target, uh, what is your specific product or brand? Context, in what type of store you are going to, to, uh, to go to, to get this product or brand, based on what prices? Time, within a week, month, or a year. In other words, when asking consumers to forecast their likely purchase of a product or a brand, we want to specify exactly the different circumstances, the purpose of the purchase, the location of the purchase, the time of the purchase, and so on. There is only one question that is really matter for marketeers. Uh, they need to know the answer for uh, how likely is it that a customer would recommend this product or service to a friend or colleague. Brand relationships characterized in terms of brand resonance and offered possible measures for each of the following key dimensions, behavioral loyalty, attitudinal attachment, sense of community, and active engagement. In this slide, we will be discussing behavioral loyalty and attitudinal attachment as uh, two dimensions of brand relationships. With respect to behavioral loyalty, to capture reported brand usage and behavioral loyalty, marketeers can ask consumers about their past purchase history and their intended future purchases of a product or a brand. They can also make their measures open-ended. They can force consumers to choose one of two brands. Uh, they can also offer multiple choice or rating scales, with, meaning that either the marketeer can ask an open-ended question, what do you think about uh, McDonald's? And I'll leave you to say whatever you want without giving you uh, a choices to, uh, uh, or an options to choose from. Uh, force consumers to choose one of two brands. If I'm, uh, um, if I'm, uh, I'm asking you about fast food, for example, then I would uh, suggest one or two brands in particular to discuss it with you or offer multiple choice or rating skills. I'll put you like a questionnaire, a multiple choice, a number of sentences to rate uh, the fast food in general with respect to fast, convenient, price, um, uh, hygiene, uh, responsiveness, reliability, etc., etc. The second point in uh, uh, the second dimensions in brand relationships is uh, attitudinal attachment. Some researchers uh, call this attitudinal attachment as brand love. And we tend to, uh, the very good example of brand love, we said uh, Apple in particular, uh, she managed, uh, Apple as a brand, managed to uh, develop brand love with its customers. However, attitudinal attachment can be defined in the terms of two main uh, dimensions, brand self-connections and brand prominence. Prominence means status. Brand self-connections consists of connected and part of who you are. Those are sub-dimensions of the brand self-connections. Connected means to what extent you feel that you are personally connected to a brand. How do you feel? Are you really connected to X brand? Think of a brand that you really love and you are attached to. And ask yourself this question. Do you really feel that you are personally connected to the brand? Part of who you are. To what extent is the brand part of you and who you are? This is about self-concept. Does it reflect you, this brand that you really love? Does it? you feel like it is you, it reflects you? The second dimension, brand prominence, it consists of another two sub-dimensions, automatic and naturally. Automatic, when we say something that comes automatically, this means without thinking. Huh? But they are saying to what extent are your thoughts and feelings towards a brand come to mind on their own? They come 
اون انت قاعد مع نفسك بتلاقيها بتيجي لوحدها انت من غير اول ما حد يقول قدامك تشوكلت هتقول كادبري يلا ناكل بره طب تعالوا ماكدونالدز يلا نركب عايزين نغير عربيتنا ناخد البراند الفلانيه ذات كومز اوتوماتيكلي تو يور مايند ات ايز ويزاوت ريلي اكزيرتينج اني افورت And the second sub-dimension is naturally. To what extent do your thoughts and feelings towards a brand come to you naturally and instantly? Instantly, immediately, and directly, and rapidly. على طول في بالك, على طول بتفكر فيها, بتيجي على بالك بسرعة, وبصفة مستمرة, وبصفة مباشرة. يعني, this is two main dimensions that really could be used by researchers to measure attitudinal attachment, which is sometimes we call it uh, the brand love. In this slide, we will continue the other dimensions of brand relationships, particularly sense of community and active engagement, and another one which is Fournier's brand relationship research. With respect to sense of community, one interesting concept that has been proposed with respect to community is what we call social currency. What is social currency? They said the extent to which people share the brand or information about it as part of their everyday social lives at work, at home, etc. For example, I may give you a good example, like if you are if you feel like you are part of Starbucks community, for example. So every morning you stop by Starbucks, get your cup of coffee, written on it, coffee to go, of course. So written on it, Starbucks with its logo, you take it to work. So on daily basis, your colleagues at work, they are seeing you having your cup of coffee from Starbucks. So this is the sense of community. This is how you are actually sharing your brand uh, uh, with others. Socially, you are talking about it. You would uh, definitely, they would ask you on a daily basis. On a daily basis, you are going to have your cup of coffee uh, from Starbucks. Yes, I love the smell. I love the way they uh, serve me. Uh, by time, they got to know my name. Once I'm in, they uh, they tend to say, yes, your uh, order is ready. We know your order, etc., etc. This is sense of, uh, this is, sorry, social currency. Uh, please refer to figure 910 in your textbook, page 348. It's Vivaldi Partners Social Currency Model. Look at, uh, look at the different dimension. You are not required to know them by heart. However, you have to read them. It will give you, uh, um, a, 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 this is an extra reading for sense of community. Um, and um, Vivaldi basically is highlighting uh, some dimensions for sense of community, for brand sense of community with key questions and the value of every dimension. Like, uh, for example, conversation. When you are talking about your preferred brand with others, so customers proactively talk about the brand. Always you are talking about a brand. Advocacy. Customers are willing to tell others about a brand or recommend it uh, further or, or recommend it in the future, and so on. The second, uh, the fourth, sorry, the fourth dimension of brand relationships is active engagement. Active in, actively, to be actively engaged with a brand, this means the extent to which consumers are willing to invest their personal resources of time, energy, and money on the brand beyond those resources expended during purchase or consumption. ده معناه ايه؟ معناه انت اشتريت البراند خلاص the resources that you exerted uh, or you invested in buying and purchasing the brand دي انتهت خلاص. انما you are willing to invest even more from your time, energy and money to uh, in the brand to discuss it with others and to get further engaged with the brand. Is they that and let, for example, this could be via exploring word of mouth behavior by talking uh, with others about your uh, preferred your your preferred brand. Uh, you can uh, uh, be engaged online in particular, and definitely this is what's happening right now. And word of mouth as well became electronic word of mouth. This is what we call E WOM. WOM W O M stands for word of mouth, and E stands for electronic word of mouth. And also online behavior. In online behavior, 
you may give more information about the brand uh, uh, to others you may learn others how to use uh, a particular uh, product from your preferred brand you may um, uh, say some comment about uh, the brand uh, uh, on the on uh, the firm's uh, facebook page or on the firm facebook page or uh, with uh, on your own wall and accordingly accordingly you are spreading the word as we were uh, as we are saying Please read the science of branding 9.2 that provides a detailed breakdown of the concept. It is in your textbook, page 349. And when I say read the science of branding or read figure so and so and so, please read. It will give you extra understanding and further understanding of the concept. The final uh, dimension of brand relation uh, the one uh, that called Fournier's brand relation uh, relationship research. Fournier developed six main facets or aspects or features of brand relationship quality. Please read them in page three, uh, 351. This part is only for reading. So we are going to concentrate on the four main dimensions of brand relations, particularly uh, um, brand uh, loyalty and attitudinal uh, behavioral loyalty attitudinal attachment sense of community and active engagement comprehensive models of consumer based brand equity and this last part of chapter 9 will be discussing brand dynamics model and relation and cbbe model brand dynamics is a model developed by marketing research agency it offers a graphical model as highlighted in this slide and in your textbook figure 912 page 352 the graphical model goes into an ascending uh, uh, as an ascending order commencing with presence all the way to bonding the uh, model highlights the emotional and functional strengths of relationship consumers have with a brand uh, basically the five levels of the model in ascending order are presence relevance performance advantage and bonding Consumers are placed into one of the five levels depending on their brand responses. To what extent you are attached to the brand? How, you re how do you respond to uh, a brand? Uh, are, you bond are, you, uh, are you properly bonding with a brand? So you will be placed at the top of the, per uh, of the pyramid. If you are just aware and know the brand uh, that it is there, it, it is present in the market, you will be at the very bottom of the hierarchy at the presence by comparing the, the pattern across brands marketeers can understand and identify the different strengths and weaknesses and see where are the areas that brands need to actually improve and modify in order to increase and, and uh, in order to increase uh, consumers loyalty how brand dynamics model uh, can be related to a, a consumer-based brand equity model, which is CBBE. We can easily relate the five stages of brand dynamics to the four ascending stages of CBBE model. CBBE model equal brand resonance model. It can be four different steps in an ascending order also from bottom to top commencing with identity, meaning, responses, and relationships. CBBE model has uh, very significant aspects. Uh, number one, it emphasizes on brand salience and breadth and depths of brand awareness as the foundation of brand building. Number two, its recognition of the dual nature of brands and the significance of both rational and emotional considerations. On the rational consideration that speak to the mind, with emotional consideration that speak to the heart. And finally, the importance it places on brand resonance as the culmination of brand building and a more meaningful way to view brand loyalty.